Hey everybody, so check this out. Right here, what I've got is a lupine flower, and this perennialized here, zone 9B, it actually died back to the ground over winter time. You can see all the dead foliage and stems surrounding the plant. Actually makes a good mulch right around the new growth. These actually produce really beautiful flowers. Um, nice spiked flowers that are especially loved by bumblebees, butterflies, hummingbirds, and of course me, the gardener. Now because the lupine flower, known botanically as Lupinus perennis, is in the legume family, Fabaceae, it performs a special function that can be really helpful for gardeners and makes an excellent companion plant. And what it does is it fixes nitrogen from the atmosphere and creates nitrogen root nodules which help to feed not only the plant itself, but the surrounding plants. So mixing the lupine flower amongst your other plants is really helpful because you're essentially planting free fertilizer. So today, and it's February 13th, 2018, what I'm gonna be doing is taking some basal cuttings from this plant. So although it looks nice and dense, like you could actually divide it, um, you could probably get away with that, but more than likely, you're going to cause quite a bit of damage to the plant, set it back quite a bit, and you may or may not have a plant that survives that. So the best way to actually propagate plants like the lupine are to take basal cuttings. So what's the difference between a regular cutting and a basal cutting? Well, with a regular cutting, and I'll show you an example here on this aronia berry, you could really take a cutting anywhere along the main stem, as long as you have a few growth nodes happening on that stem. You want four or five would be um, most desirable. And you would just take a cutting and maybe put some rooting hormone on there and put it in your growing medium, whether it's sand or potting mix. In the case of a basal cutting, what we're gonna do is, and I'm gonna be using a grafting knife, but you want a sharp knife, you can use a paring knife or even a razor knife. We wanna get as close to the base of the plant, right near the roots. So now that it's clear, what we want to do is choose one of these main stalks coming up, or a couple, depending on how many you want to take from the plant. And we'll take this smaller one over here. And you can see how when I went down, I did a diagonal cut. It's a little rough at the end. I'm going to give it a fresh cut. Just like that. Then we'll go ahead and remove some of the side growth here. And there you have it. And it's best to take this style of cutting late winter, early spring before the plant becomes too woody. And as you can see, I left a little bit of foliage on the top of the plant. That's for photosynthesis to make sure we keep this cutting alive so it can start to push out new root development. Here's another beautiful lupine re-emerging right under this artichoke. I'm gonna actually break off this artichoke leaf, give it some more sun. So this is confirmation that the lupine will perennialize in zone 9b after dying back in the winter, re-emerging to form even a larger, bigger cluster of lupine flower. Just like that. So there we go, in no time at all, I got six basal cuttings. And the parent plants are still nice and full, extremely healthy. They'll continue to double in size over the next month or two. All right, so here we are over at the propagation station. This is essentially a sandbox that I've been successfully using this year for propagating lots of cuttings. And the majority of the collard greens that are growing in here are all rooted, ready to come out. Earlier today, I struck some honeysuckle cuttings, and now I'm getting ready to plop in these lupine basal cuttings. And over there, I see I got a nice little spot to stick a few more cuttings. Just make a quick little trench. And it's that quick. We now got six new lupine plants being propagated. That's what I call a money saver. And this sandbox system is a time saver for sure. And I'm just going to give this a little bit of water, level out the sand. 
don't want to wash off all the rooting hormones, so not too much. That should do it. Well, the sun's on the way down, and the chickens are letting me know they're ready to come out of the run so they can go roost for the night in the privet tree. You ready to come out, ladies? Oh. Cool. 